Hi, I'm Chris Summerfield. We're just going into the Pipe Gallery in U Street and see who's in there. I believe there's a new exhibition. Hello, Tice. You're Robert Lenkovitz's daughter, aren't you? <laughs> That's true, yes. So, uh, how long have you been in this uh, studio? Um, in this studio, I've been using it for about three years as a studio. Um, we just uh, decided to open it up um, last year when I heard the British Art Show was coming down because I've always wanted it to be a sort of more open place. We nice. first met a few years ago, didn't we? Yeah. And I think I took George Mully into Robert's gallery uh, in the parade and uh, you were in the gallery with your mum. Right. And uh, did, was, was there another sister you had with you? Uh, Kaya, my younger yeah. sister. And uh, Robert wouldn't come and see George Mully, so he had to talk to, so, Rob, uh, so George Mully had to talk to him on a mobile phone. So yeah. I photographed you um, uh, surrounding, uh, surrounding George Mully. Yeah, I, I don't remember the day too well. Yeah, I was probably about 11 or 10 or something. I remember my brother's um, Fido Dido t-shirt, that's about it. So what's it, what's, what's it like being the daughter of Robert Lenkiewicz? Um, <laughs> that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> uh, do you, uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm losing my voice. Uh, did it, did, uh, do you feel as though you got to live up to something with your art? Um, no, I don't, I think, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to make myself feel that way. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just That's feel as a, as a separate person doing yeah. my own thing, really. Um, when you were young, what did it, I won't go too much into this subject, but what did it feel like to have your dad in the, in the paper all the time um, on different subjects? You know, you, you just grow up and you're just so used to it. I think, I, I think another thing about the, I mean, art-wise, um, because my dad died when I was about, uh, 14, 13. Yes. So I knew him more as sort of a you know a father of you know fatherly family figure than, yeah. than um, sort of you know painter artistic figure. Although obviously I was fully aware and surrounded by that, and uh -huh. always <clears throat> have got questions about about that. Um, you know, in primary school and everything, and he used to come in and teach and all that. But um, yeah, on a, a personal level, it wasn't. I don't feel. Uh, so connected in, I don't know, a painterly way, as such as to maybe I would if I was really painting at your, the same time as him. Your work's a lot different to your dad's, isn't it? Um. Uh, I, yeah. I would, in some areas, it is anyway. I would have thought so. Yeah. Do you um, think you're heavily influenced by him at the same time? Um. It sounds a bit contradictory, I suppose. <laughs> in, um, you know, I, I'm not. I guess uh, I'm still trying to find my own way with it and my own sort of. Um, but yeah, obviously, certainly the subjects I'm exploring, you know, completely. Well, some completely people spend different. a lifetime trying um, to find a way, don't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're always, you're always practicing and always. And that's part of it, really, the part of the process. Because if you're happy with what you're doing, then you, uh, then you're not going to progress, are you? Yeah, no, absolutely. You're always learning um, and changing, and uh, yeah, what? I think. Sorry. Um, Influenced in a, in a sense that I suppose I, I got you know a couple of lessons off him, although I didn't really make it to uh, to colour. Um, yeah. But I got I guess a, some kind of base of, of technique because he had a really fantastic way of teaching um, yeah. to paint. So I guess I sort of have taken that in a way. Although. You studied art college as well, haven't you? Mm. How, uh, just was it just the College of Art and Design, or have you been to other places as well? Uh, no, just just that place. Yeah. How many years did you do that? Um, That's the Plymouth College of Art. I that? did a foundation <coughs> diploma course and then fine art for ah. three years. Um, so, uh, who inspires you with your work? Um, it's kind of hard to say. Um, it's, it's yeah, too many, so many people. I think. Yeah. And then nothing directly. You like the contemporary artists, don't you? Um, I like. Yeah, all, all sorts. <laughs> and you seem to experiment in a, in a, in a cross range of materials. Yeah, I enjoy working and yeah, exploring new materials. I really like just using um, different things. I, I, always, I always paint, but I've also 
I've always been drawn to sort of sculpture and three-dimensional. At what um, age work. did you start taking an interest in art? Um, I've always done it, really. I've always, you know, as long as I can remember, I've always painted and, and drawn. And um, that was encouraged. I guess both my parents were painters, so they yeah. obviously encouraged that. Genetics. Kind of but um, uh, I didn't really properly start painting, I suppose, until I was about 16 when um, my mum bought some of my dad's canvases at... Um, at an auction, and uh -huh. um, she got a lot more than she expected. She only wanted smaller ones, so she gave me all the large, massive canvases, and I just started playing around with those. Really. How many exhibitions have you had here? Um, I've had here since August. I think we've had four so far, and after me, I'm on now. There's one more to come, which is um, a group called You One. Yes. And they're going to be in your studio, are they? Um, yeah, they're going to be showing back there um, up until 9th of December. Uh -huh. um, how can people co contact you? Um, there's a website. I've got a website, which is my name, and um, uh, tayusvenkovic.com. And then there's uh, a website for the studio, which is thisisapipe.co.uk. Uh -huh. Have you got an exhibition at the moment? Yeah. Can you just quickly show us around? Um, I can show you around, but we're actually... Having lighting difficulties again. Uh -huh. well, hopefully <laughs> so the camera to will be able to handle it. Excuse the darkness, but <clears throat> it's a bit of cave in there. So, can you give us some information on these? What a reverb we've got in here. So, uh, this is like a silhouette of a landscape. Where, um, where was this? This is actually a walk from um, my flat, also. Well, my dad's studio I was born in, um, I'm living next door to it at the moment, so it starts there, um, and it's just a walk to, the, to this place, Yeah. Um, and I was just interested in, um, yeah, I, I just walked along taking photographs and just sort of documenting the way the buildings sort of transform the sky, and the way that, you know, the sky is shaped by the sort of... You sold some of those already? I've sold um, six. Miraculously. That's not a bad guy. No, <laughs> it's put me square with the rent. Well, when I get paid. So. <laughs> We're all in the same boat. <laughs> uh, have you got names for these uh, uh, paintings? I'm, I'm really awful for naming things, actually. I, particularly paintings. I don't even. I don't know what. So what is this <laughs> is this in New Street as well? Um, this is Southside Street, the end of, right. that's the glassworks there, and um, the edge, uh -huh. and then you come up Stokes Lane here, and then now you're in East Street, which is... Um, what sort of prices are these? Um, they are, I was selling these for 200 each, these ones. Yeah. And how far afield are you prepared to ship them? Um, well, one guy from has bought... I guess it depends. One guy's bought them from Hong Kong, but he's sending some to Hong Kong. Well, that's not bad. Yeah. But, um, the international connection. Okay. So yeah, you're in New Street now, and this is directly up, up on the doorstep of here. I'd like to take sort of different walks in very different cities or environments and landscapes. And yeah. Do the same thing. Why is the exhibition called the Pipe? Um, that's the studio. It's called the Pipe. Oh, I see. And, right. Um, yes. I've, I've not uh, uh, done any research before I came in, so it's taken off the cover. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, uh, it's called The Pipe um, because I had to think of a name for the place, and uh, I, yeah, I explained before I'm quite bad with, with names and things, so uh, I, I was going to call it The Vault. It is actually called The Vault officially. Yeah. But the vault, it sounded, everything sounded a bit too nightclub-y, the vault or the cave, and the, yeah, a gallery. Yeah, especially so, in the barbecue. Yeah, yeah. The, I get this, another name for this kind of room, this vaulted room, is a gallery, but I thought it would be a bit, the, the gallery would be worse. But I thought also I would address the fact that we do have a large sewage pipe running through, which somewhat spoils the ambience. Um, nothing just in the gallery space, <laughs> if you're <clears throat> meditating. Nice on a hot day. Uh, <laughs> so what's the story of these uh, pictures? Um, I like the skull. Um, William Blake's death mask. As I mentioned uh, last time I came into the gallery, this silhouette looks a lot like your dad. Yeah. Um, yeah, I keep getting asked if it's my mum or my dad or something. But yeah, it's me and Milton. Um, and 
And what's the value of this one? Um, 500. Uh -huh. Can we go on to the next one? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is it a deceased parrot? It is no, no more. No. <laughs> He's very much alive, despite some... Have um, you taught him to swear? No. <laughs> Has anybody else taught him to swear? Yeah, no, it's amazing. He only picks up what he really wants to know. So. Uh -huh. There's a lot of humour in this one. What's this, what's this all about? Um, they're all sort of about the same thing, really. Sort of the ideas of absence and presence and... Um, coming from this memento mori kind of theme that I was um, exploring with plaster a bit last year and um, a lot of things like that. Uh -huh. So what projects are you working on next? Um, I've been resting for a few days. I think from finishing all these I was I've been brushing quite a lot and I've finished most of them in two weeks. So I'm thinking about where I'm going next with it. I've got some ideas that I want to pick up, but I need to do some more research. I don't have the internet at the moment, so I'm just sort of waiting till the 15th comes and then my exhibition's over and I can escape this sort of cave which I've been stuck in for three months and just, um, uh, yeah, get some light and... Uh -huh. <laughs> <coughs> What artists do you like the most? Um, uh, as far as painters go, I think Anna Rothko and Velasquez and Rembrandt and um, Gerhard de Richter and um, it's a hop yeah, recently I, I really liked Hopper and Magritte but, um, and Hockney, I love Hockney, but for those three I think less I don't so much like the way they paint people or figures, but I love the way they paint buildings and um, spaces. Really what, makes really you, what, what makes you stay in Plymouth? Do you find uh, Plymouth an inspiring place to be? Um, I uh, just haven't really escaped yet, but uh, <laughs> I, <Cold> uh, <laughs> I find it a really nice base because it's so slow moving, so laid back down here. That yeah. it's I'm great the opposite, you see, I like to be in the fast lane. Yeah, well, I, I, I find it really great to you know, visit London and to visit Liverpool and to visit wherever and then to come back here as a base is, is quite nice but I don't know, I, don't, I wouldn't want to stay here for the rest of my life I, or at least um, any, any country you would like to go to? Well I definitely want to do a huge amount of travelling I'm hoping next year I'm um, uh, going to visit some um, New Zealand and Australia with my boyfriend and maybe stop over and just buy some ridiculous sort of round the world ticket and stop off in Fiji and Singapore or something. Sounds good. But um, I'd love to go to Spelman. Have, have you done much travelling yet? No, um, I still haven't got a, I, yeah, difficulty getting a passport because stupid new laws are going. But um, I should have one soon. And um, probably, yeah, I'd love to go to cold north, really, Norway, uh -huh. Svalbard, maybe go. I'd like, love to see the Northern Lights. Yeah, yeah, that would be it's tremendous. interesting. I've actually yeah. seen that sort of phenomena down in the south of France, actually. It sounds a strange place to see it, but when you see the, the lights bouncing off the atmosphere, it's absolutely stunning to, yeah. to see. Yeah, well, apparently next year, 2012, it's going to be um, the best it's been in 50 years. Apparently, uh -huh. 50 years ago, you see it in Mexico. It's Olympic special, is it? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> right, thanks a lot, Ty. So I hope to interview you again sometime. <laughs> Thank you.